Welcome to the Al Jazari channel, where you will learn capacity planning as a core operations management activity. The goal of strategic capacity planning is to achieve a match between the long term supply capabilities of an organization and the predicted level of long term demand. Capacity often refers to an upper limit on the rate of output. Even though this seems simple enough, there are subtle difficulties in actually measuring capacity in certain cases. These difficulties arise because of different interpretations of the term capacity and problems with identifying suitable measures for a specific situation. No single measure of capacity will be appropriate in every situation. Rather, the measure of capacity must be tailored to the situation. This table provides some examples of commonly used measures of capacity. Up to this point, we have been using a general definition of capacity. Although it is functional, it can be refined into two useful definitions of capacity. The first is the design capacity. That is the maximum output rate or service capacity of an operation, process, or facility is designed to do. While the second is the effective capacity, which is the design capacity minus allowances such as personal time and preventive maintenance. These different measures of capacity are useful in defining two measures of system effectiveness, efficiency and utilization. Efficiency is the ratio of actual output to effective capacity and utilization is the ratio of actual output to design capacity. Both measures are expressed as percentages. Example. Given the following information. Design capacity equals 50 trucks per day. Effective capacity equals 40 trucks per day. Actual output equals 36 trucks per day. Compute the efficiency and utilization of the vehicle repair department. Simply substitute in these equations. So, the efficiency equals 36 divided by 40 multiplied by 100 equal 90%. And the utilization equals 36 divided by 50 multiplied by 100 equal 72%. Compared to the effective capacity of 40 units per day, 36 units per day looks pretty good. However, compared to the design capacity of 50 units per day, 36 units per day is much less impressive although probably more meaningful. Because effective capacity acts as a lid on actual output, the real key to improving capacity utilization is to increase effective capacity by correcting quality problems, maintaining equipment in good operating condition, fully training employees, and improving bottleneck operations that constrain output. Let us solve a problem. Determine the utilization and the efficiency for each of these situations. A. A loan processing operation that processes an average of 7 loans per day. The operation has a design capacity of 10 loans per day and an effective capacity of 8 loans per day. B. A furnace repair team that services an average of 4 furnaces a day if the design capacity is 6 furnaces a day and the effective capacity is 5 furnaces a day. C. Would you say that systems that have higher efficiency ratios than other systems will always have higher utilization ratios than those other systems? Explain. In the first situation, the actual output is 7 loans per day, the design capacity is 10 loans per day, and the effective capacity is 8 loans per day. So, substitute these values in the shown equations. This results in the utilization equal to 7 divided by 10 multiplied by 100 equals 70%. And efficiency equals 7 divided by 8 multiplied by 100 equals 87.5%. In the second situation, the actual output is 4 furnaces per day, the design capacity is 6 furnaces per day, and the effective capacity is 5 furnaces per day. So, substitute these values in the shown equations. This results in the utilization equal to 4 divided by 6 multiplied by 100 equals 66.7%. And efficiency equals 4 divided by 5 multiplied by 100 equals 80%. For the last question, the answer is no. 
Systems that have higher efficiency ratios than other systems will not always have higher utilization ratios than those of other systems. This is because efficiency is the ratio between the actual output to the effective capacity while utilization is the ratio between the actual output and the designed capacity. In other words, systems with high efficiency efficiently use the effective capacity however, this effective capacity is the limit of the actual output and it may be very low compared to the designed capacity. Consequently, the utilization is low. Another problem. In a job shop, effective capacity is only 50% of design capacity, and actual output is 80% of effective output. What design capacity would be needed to achieve an actual output of 8 jobs per week? From our reading of the problem, we have a relationship between the effective and design capacity on one hand, and on the other hand another relationship between the actual output and the effective capacity. Another piece of information is given which is the actual output and it is required to find the design capacity to achieve this actual output. We will start with the relationship between the actual output and the effective capacity and the value of the actual output to obtain the effective capacity. So, the actual output divided by the effective capacity multiplied by 100 equals 80%. Substitute by the given value of the actual output, which is 8, and solve for the effective capacity this results in an effective capacity equal to 10 jobs per week. Now, using the relationship between the effective and design capacity along with the calculated effective capacity, we can find the required design capacity. So, the effective capacity divided by the design capacity multiplied by 100 equals 50%. Substitute by the calculated effective capacity, which is 10, and solve for the design capacity, this results in a design capacity equal to 20 jobs per week. So, to achieve 8 jobs per week a design capacity of 20 jobs per week is required. In this video, the efficiency and the utilization of a system are explained by solving an example and two problems. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, so press like and share it. In the next video, another capacity planning topic will be explained so stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. See you again.